Dram. A wee dram. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Leg Drop the World. My name is Judge, and this is my good buddy, Doc. Doc, what you got there, bud? <laughs> I didn't know we were doing this. We're doing it. All right. Uh, I have a uh, 10-year-old Kalila, which is uh, Connoisseur's <laughs> Choice. Ooh. It's uh, Independent Bottling nice. uh, by Gordon and McPhail's. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. That is the scotch of choice tonight. Scotch or whiskey? Scotch, yeah. Scotch. Scotch whiskey. Awesome. Well, I just felt like I'd start that. I don't mm. know the rest of it, but... Yeah. Well, you know. thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, that's the one. There you go. Uh, Got it. If you could, take a minute, hit the uh, like button, the subscribe button, uh, and hit the share button. Mm -hmm. Share our videos share with your friends. With so we can have a conversation together. Conversation. We could talk about wrestling. Wrestling. We could talk about Raw. Mm -hmm. We could talk about... Smackdown. Yeah. I can see a world mm -hmm. where you mm. and us mm -hmm. talk about 205 Live mm -hmm. and NXT mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Together, we can build something beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is two weeks in a row now that, that we've had a weird opening. Yeah, the openings yeah. are not no. good. Uh, I, I, you know what? I think that was pretty good. Okay, so they're different. We'll say we'll say that. Great. I'm not wearing the right hat today either. I just <gasps> grabbed. A hat. I'm not wearing a Sami Zayn hat. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a good hat to wear for uh, when we talk about uh, Drew. Oh, it is Drew. So, right. anyways, let's start talking about Raw. Check us out on social media. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Facebook, all that stuff's all in Instagram down there. And Twitter. We need more followers. We're hilarious. So well, this one needs more followers. Yeah, this one I do. Um, yeah, that would be great. So, anyways, yeah, let's talk about wrestling. We're going to talk about Raw, uh, SmackDown, NXT, and 205 Live. 205 Live and then NXT. Yeah. So, I mean, we can mix it up. With all that to. being said, j -j 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 yes. Hit me. All right. We start off with um, Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman. Mm. They're in Denver. Shout out to Denver, by the way. From Denver, so he's wearing a hat. I'm wearing a hat. He can he can prove that he's from Colorado just by wearing a hat. Yeah, I can prove that I'm from Washington. Washington by, wearing, by a wearing a shirt. Wearing a shirt. It's green. It is like the green. Sonics wearer. <gasps> Ooh. Um. So we get Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman. This was a okay match. So yeah, Braun Strowman beats him up. He's Quite defeated both members of the, the Raw Shield. Tag Team Champions. The Shield. Well, they're not the Shield unless they have Roman Reigns. But Dean and Seth have the the tag champ the tag champ belts. Yes. Last week, uh, Braun beats Dean. This week, he beats Seth. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're trying to kind of rebuild. Braun Strowman's character, yeah. his image after losing to uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was an okay match. Yeah, I. It wasn't bad. I was fine with it. Same thing with the the Dean match. It wasn't bad. No, I just think that Seth got in too much offense. But I I always think that. Yeah, I you guess, thought that with but... with Dean. I thought it was fine. Um. So then after Braun Strowman finishes beating him up, Dean comes running out. Tries to help his buddy out. Dean takes a couple power slams. And then uh, who else comes out but the shield? I mean, sorry, wow, the uh, the bar. The bar comes out, and then they just yeah, as, clean as up. Braun is walking up yep. the – As Braun is walking up the ramp, the bar is walking down the ramp. And, yeah, they uh, – Braun is passing the bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he passed the bar. He passed the bar. Uh, Good job on that bar exam, bro. Yeah, nice job. So yeah, then uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. Cesaro, let's take a second here and talk about the fact that Cesaro with that mouthpiece in. Yeah, I tweeted gonna, this earlier in the week. He's got a mouthpiece because he has like a mouth, mouth guard, which Shinsuke wears one. Yep. But this one is like, Great. I don't know. It's like thicker or something. Mm -hmm. And when Cesaro makes a mean face, he looks awesome. I mean, 
Uh, and this was my math. Cesaro, no mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. You know, no he champion. gets lost, right? Yeah, you're no, not no belt. No Cesaro champion. with mouthpiece. Universal champion? Uh, question mark. I think so. I think so too. I think he could make it work. I think he could make it work too. Um, then we get Elias Samson in the middle of the ring. Oh boy! And uh, line of the night, which is he starts talking, and Denver starts. You you say start it. Start doing his thing, and he goes, "Don't start with me, Denver. Don't. Don't start with me. Don't." And it's great, and I was happy about it. Yeah, so, it was good. Uh, I, I I have to say I wasn't a huge fan of Elias when he first came in. Mm -hmm. I thought he was pretty funny in NXT. Um, I wasn't a huge fan when he got called up. He is definitely growing on me, and I think a lot of it was based on his match that he had. He's 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 pretty athletic. Yeah, he's great. So, so he has a match with Titus O'Neil. And wins, of course. Yeah, he but, beats Titus pretty handily. But, I mean, the dude is, like, Titus is pretty big. Yeah. And he just, like, picks him up. Yeah. And just manhandles Titus at points. And yeah. Like, Whoa. So here's the thing. Like, I, I, for me, it was Drifter, or Elias, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, Funny-ish character, mm -hmm. right? I mean, he's a good heel uh, because he makes everybody boo him, right? Mm -hmm. I get it. It was some... the it was the ring work that was a question mark for me. I just hadn't seen him do a lot other than just, you know, kick and punch, you yeah. know, kind of strike heavy stuff mm -hmm. or like, you know, side headlocks, you know, but seeing him really display some of his his athleticism, mm -hmm. it's like, ooh, man, this guy has he has the makings, he has the pieces, you know, the ingredients in the recipe yeah. to make something really, really good. He does. He got a lot of heat. I mean, he came out and he was like, "I'd rather drown myself a mile into the ocean than live here," and just like a shot at them being a mile high, which. I thought that was kind of funny. He also, my favorite one was the people of Denver are the worst in the world, or the worst in the USA. Yeah, and I was like, hmm. yeah, yeah. Hey, you get a little heat from me, but I listen like there, judgy, judgy boy. Yeah. We call that cheap heat. Yeah, well, I mean, he did great with it. I feel like he made more jokes about the city than any other city they've been in, which I liked. Sure. sure. Uh, next, we get a backstage segment where uh, Nikki Jane, Mickey. James. I don't know why I said Nikki. Nikki? I did. Uh, Nikki James, James. Bella. Yes. Mickey James is Cross. has a... Yeah. A lot of Nikki's. Yeah, we do have a lot of Nikki's. Well, I guess two. Receives a package waiting in her dressing room, and it's a bunch of Depends and a walker and yeah. all this other silly stuff. And um, so b instead of being the calm mature woman that she is mm -hmm. she immediately goes after alexa yep and like is on a war path looking yep. for her yep uh foxy we got to see foxy backstage rip foxy yeah. her career bring back man. foxy please oh, bring back foxy um so then that just leads to a match uh mickey james versus nia Jax. yeah uh, James wins this match, but it's via disqualification. Yeah, she was gonna pin Nia, but then Alexa Bliss got involved. And yeah, so it was the, like a tornado DDT mm -hmm. or a satellite DDT or whatever they called it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it looked weird. I, it, yeah, it was a little like Ooh. yeah, it didn't quite hit correctly. Nia um, Jax is very green. Nia yeah. sold it. She sold that part of it well. Uh, but yeah, Alexa comes in and breaks up the the count. And then, yeah, it gets Naya disqualified. Yeah, Naya was pretty green in this match. She had, there was a yeah, part. Yeah, I go back and forth on her. Every once yeah. in a while she does, she has a match, and it's like, wow. Yeah. She's really strong. She's, you know, she can carry mm -hmm. certain girls, or she can at least work, um, you know, power safely. moves, but do them safely. Yeah. There are other times where it's just like, this Ooh, someone's that gonna was die. Not her night. Someone's gonna die. Night. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. Not that she doesn't know that. Yeah. Um. Then we get Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan versus the Club. Just to be clear, I am high on too sweet on uh, on the Good Brother, yeah. Nia Jax. Yeah, I think she's good. She's so. great. 
Uh, so yeah, Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan versus the club. And I'll not say a cross word about the club. The I'm club glad wins. they got a win. The club wins. So here's my theory, and I know that it's crazy. It's crazy. But we had the whole Bullet Club invasion. We did. Right? Uh, you know, front and center on uh, 205 Live, you see a guy wearing a Bullet Club shirt. Yeah. You see Kenny Omega shirts. You see Marty Skrull shirts. Yep. Right? We hear reports about the, training in his grave. the Bullet Club um, T-shirts outselling WWE T-shirts at Hot Topic. Yep. I mean, part of me is like, are they giving the club a win? Because here's the thing. They get the win over Matt Hardy and Jason Jordan, mm -hmm. who, you know, Jason Jordan has come in with a ton of like push. oomph. Yeah. But, push. I mean, he hasn't been getting wins. Yeah, but know? he's been putting on great matches, I feel like. I mean, But the problem is he's not getting wins against guys like Cena and Reigns, yeah, which you wouldn't expect him to get those, those no. wins. But, Maybe next year. You know, and then you have Matt, who they, you know, came in and it was a huge thing. That was a huge signing to have them back in the WWE. Yep. I, I thought even though they're not regular tag team members, mm -hmm. Matt and Jason, I thought it was still a big win for the club. Yeah. And so part of me is like, man, are they going to try to do push something like to push the club because the Maybe. Bullet Club is so popular? Maybe. I mean. Crazy. They could always bring it's Finn crazy. back or move AJ over to Raw. It's a crazy could you imagine? theory. It's a crazy theory. Could you imagine? You can just just crazy right having now. AJ Finn and the club back together yeah. on one team on one brand. Yeah, they could do like a War Games kind of thing. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Whoa. Uh, yeah, I, I would love it. I would so, love anyways, for the club to sorry. win. No, you're fine. Um, then we get the main event, which is The Miz versus Roman Reigns for the inter for the IC. Um, Reigns wins via disqualification. The Miz Taraj come out like the shield. They come through the stands, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and then, so The Miz looks like he's about ready to, so... Roman beats up the Miz Taraj with yeah. a chair and blah, blah, blah. It's just bad. So Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas are, are gone. They're gone. gone. They've and been effectively written out of WWE programming. Mm -hmm. We will see them on main event again. At least for the next few months. Yeah. Um, but the Miz looks like he's about ready to lose, about ready to take a spear. And who comes out but the bar. The bar. Yeah. 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 There we go. There we go. Uh, they come out and they help the Miz, which is why uh, it's a DQ, and Roman doesn't get to get the belt. Nope. So, I I we talked about this before. I was not a big fan of the match. Mm -hmm. I mean, spots and stuff were okay. Everything looked fine, but the underlying yeah, we everything about underneath this. is bad. The top layer is good. All so, the stuff underneath is bad. So to break it down, I thought that it was a good match because The Miz actually got a lot of offense in mm -hmm. on Roman Reigns, a yep. guy who has been going running through guys like Cena, guys like Braun, guys like the Undertaker. Undertaker. You know, the fact that The Miz got off as much offense as he did mm -hmm. against Roman Reigns I thought was kind of a big deal. Like that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. The thing that you are saying mm -hmm. is that you thought that it made Roman look too strong. Roman is way too strong because right he was able to take out the Miztourage, two, two people, people um, and then go on and have a very competitive match with the Miz. Very competitive match. So granted, the Miztourage didn't get any offense in. Yeah. But I still feel like. Taking a chair to somebody and like beating the crap out of two people would yeah. wear you down to yeah. where you probably wouldn't have that great of a match. Yeah. But I don't know. I just think he's too strong right now. Yeah. So this was sort of that like looking at the details. I was looking at the, the, the logic of it mm -hmm. when it came to um, gender and yep. stealing the championship belt. Yep. And why can't they have a championship match? He's just, he has the belt. Go get the belt from him. No, he's gone. He's in the club. Right? That's he's the, the that's the, the logic part. Yeah. Right? 
Yep, yep. And with this particular match, they all they needed to do was get Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas out. Yeah. They just needed to get them out. Yep. So the beatdown that happened before the match happened sort of in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. It was the only reason it happened was because, and I know that there are other ways that they could do it. Just like I there had are a other ways way to do it. Just like there are other ways for them to do lots and lots of things. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. I, I to me it's two it's apples and oranges. Mm-hmm. One is we need to write Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas off. Mm-hmm. We'll just have Roman beat him up with a chair and then we'll never see him again. And then we have the issue of this match. And when it came to just the issue of the match, I thought it was a good match because yeah. it made the Miz look strong. I, and I think the Miz did look strong. I I will agree with that. But my issue was that it I think Roman was booked stronger. They were like. It was like they were sitting down in a room and Creative was like, great, here's the match. And then somebody else from Creative was like, wait, the Miz is just as strong as Roman, so we can't have that. And then they said, oh, yeah, you're right. Well, we'll just have him beat up some more people. I don't think that's the way it happened. I don't think it is, but that's just how I feel like it happened. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Moving on. Yes, move on. Uh, Finn Balor calls out Bray Wyatt. And this promo that Bray cuts was too spooky for Doc. Listen, man. Too his spooky. His face was too spooky. It was too creepy. Too I don't. Okay. Here's some information too about Doc. Spooky. That most people don't know. Uh, I don't like scary movies. And I don't like scary movies. Mm. And I don't like scary movies. How do you feel about face paint? So, yeah, like the the fa- it just made him look too creepy. Yeah, he gets like this uh, like fishnet kind of thing going over like his it. face and it's like white underneath his he's got face paint on. So, this he's just so, talking about Sister Abigail and yeah. how Sister Abigail wants to meet Finn. So. Yeah. So, we keep getting these sort of backstage segments where or I guess not backstage, but video packages where uh Bray Wyatt keeps saying she never lied to me. Or she wouldn't lie to me. Or she, no, she never lied yeah, to me. Yeah, she never lied to me. She never lied to me. And then we get this full promo from him. Is that where we are? Is that what we're talking about? Yep. The, the promo for him. Uh, and then he says that um, sh- she never lied to me, but you did, speaking to Finn Balor. Mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so essentially the whole promo is uh, is – w- does two things. One, it tells us that Sister Abigail is still alive and kicking somehow. Well, she's not alive. So, if you recall, Randy burned down the compound, which right, right. should have killed, uh, which I guess, should have laid to rest Sister Abigail's body. Correct. But Eric Rowan moved the body. I guess alive that. was the wrong word. She's still she's haunting. Still, yeah, she's, she's still active. She's spiriting. Right? And so, um, in the same way that Finn can become the demon. Yes. Bray now becomes Sister Abigail, or at least is taken over by Sister Abigail. I don't like this. We think, right? So well, yeah. speculation was that that Sister Abigail's coming back, mm-hmm. and uh, there were a couple people that it was rumored were going to play Sister Abigail. Yep. But the story, the newest one. yeah, the the newest rumor is that Bray gets his own demon type, yeah, yeah, transformation, which is. Sister Abigail. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why the like the whole thing changes, and he's got like his hair down over his face and like a mesh thing over mm-hmm. his face, and then his face is painted white, but around his eyes they're painted black. And he's got like black streaks on his cheeks and stuff. Yeah, it was too creepy for me. Too spooky for you're, Doc. You're talking to the guy who won't go see it. I'm I not going to see it. I loved it. But I don't like the fact that he's changing into Sister Abigail. I think that's dumb. Yeah. I think it's dumb. Moving on to another dumb thing, Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Emma and Alicia Fox. I was not a fan of this match. Fun fact, Bailey watches her NXT videos when she's depressed, so she should probably watch a lot more of them because <laughs> she looks depressed. I don't know. I mean, I thought it was okay. It was just I don't listen to rules. That's what Fox says. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this is it's weird. I don't know what the whole deal is with this. It feels like filler and spinning wheels. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, then I'm gonna let you run with this one because <laughs> I turned it off. Oh, that's right. Okay. So some nasty looking Enzo comes out. Wet nasty he cuts a gross promo. Gross freaking thing. He, here's creature. the problem. Judge does not. So remember when Judge wouldn't say Roman Reigns's name? Well, Enzo has now taken over that spot. Um, so Enzo comes out and he cuts a great promo. And Judge is going to disagree with every word that I'm about to say. He comes out. He cuts a promo. It's a little long, but that's his shtick now, right? We all know that when Enzo comes out, he's going to talk for a long time. It's also going to be kind of good at points, right? He's standing in the ring. Neville's music hits, and the whole... And a, or a 205 Live roster. I said NXT. I know. The whole 205 Live roster comes out with Neville, and they all stand around the outside of the ring. They all stand on the ring apron. Uh, Enzo says, hey, look, I got a piece of paper. And this piece of paper says that... Daddy says you can't touch me. Not <laughs> only are you not allowed to touch me, you know, they all gave up their title shots by beating him up. But now if you touch me, you're fired, right? But before he does this, he goes around to each and every member of the roster and roasts them. And it made me laugh. I'm not a big Enzo fan. I understand your frustrations with this character. But this part was actually kind of good. <laughs> it was, it was kind of good. He did a good job um, with, with some of the things that he had said to these people. Uh, so, anyways, after he gets done roasting them, if you haven't seen this, you should watch it. You shouldn't. Don't watch it because it just gets more eyes funny. on him, and he doesn't need more eyes. Don't watch it. It's um, awful. So uh, then Kurt Angle's music hits, um, and he comes sucks. out and he says, "Enzo sucks." Listen, Enzo, Enzo you're sucks. right. No one in that ring or on that ring can touch you, or they'll get fired. Mm -hmm. But None of those rules apply to the newest member of 205 Live, the newest signing, and this Kalisto's okay music with. hits. And what's funny is his music hits, but I don't think anybody knew that it was his music because the music yeah. hits and they're like, Who? and then Kalisto comes out and they're like, oh, oh Lucha, I, I remember Lucha, that guy. Lucha. Uh, so anyways, Kalisto comes out and he essentially beats up Enzo, yeah. uh, hits him with a Salida del Sol, and that ends that segment. I thought it was good. I thought that segment was good. Are you going to ask me? Yeah, what you, would you think about it? I... Uh, wait, okay, I'll ask you. Yeah. Overall, overall, overall what are you going to give it on a scale from 1 to 10? I'm going to give it a 4 because of the Enzo segment. I'm going to give it... You didn't even talk about The Shield. Oh, that's There's a right. backstage thing that's with The right. Shield. So like, that, you know. that segment ends. The end of the segment ends. And then uh, Roman Reigns is backstage going... Ugh. <sighs> <sighs> oh, my <sighs> skull hurts from that skull-crushing finale. And then he stands up <sighs> and Dean you know, comes into frame. And the crowd goes wild. And everyone's starting to... Yeah, and <laughs> this guy's got it. Uh, and the crowd starts chanting shield 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 and then the camera backs up a little bit more seth rollins comes into frame on the other side of him and they all just kind of acknowledge each other no words are spoken they look at each other and they nod and then dean ambrose walks away and then it's just seth and roman and then seth rollins walks away and then we just see Roman, and that's when it fades to black. So that's the big shield. Sh shield. I almost said cheese, but it's the tease is what I was about to say. Yeah. But it is very cheesy. It's super cheesy. Uh, someone on uh, on Twitter I noticed uh, set this whole segment to um, uh, Ario Speedwagon. Nice. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. Do, do, do. I've forgotten <laughs> what I started fighting for. That's hilarious. And it worked perfectly. Of course it did. Uh, what are you going to give it? Because I I'm, gave it a four. I'm going to give this episode of Raw a six. Okay. Um, let's move on to SmackDown Live. We start off with Shinsuke Smackdown Nakamura. SmackDown Hotel. Yeah. 
with uh, Shinsuke talking to Renee Young yep. about his upcoming match against Jinder Mahal. Yep. Jinder Mahal says, yeah, get your name out my mouth. Or I get your name out your mouth, whatever. Get your name out. Get, get, my your, name get my out name out your, your mouth. mouth. There yeah. you go, that one. Yeah. Um, well, the Singh brothers come out, and they announce him. It's a ruse! Uh, right? Yeah, because they they go like this, you know, motioning behind them, oh, wait, yeah. and actually Jinder comes from out of the ring section and, and hits uh, Shinsuke from behind. Uh, and they scuffle a bit. <laughs> hits him with a horrible wow, coloss. Wow, this coloss... <laughs> was poor to say the least Shinsuke looked like he got you kind of got hurt on a so. scale of one to ten it was a two it was like a one okay like maybe a one yeah it was not good um yeah black then we have charlotte and becky lynch versus carmella and natalia this match was fine yeah it was kind of good with it. what was really weird to me is that natty won clean well listen she took a briefcase to the face. Wait, no, no, no. Who did? Carmella. Or sorry, uh, uh, Charlotte did. No, sir. Becky. Carmella was outside of the ring and hits Becky with the Money in the Bank briefcase. I thought that. That distracts Charlotte. Charlotte turns around. Natty comes and clobbers her from behind and then it puts, her, uh, puts her in the uh, sharpshooter. That's right. You're right. You're right. Yep. So it was a distraction, sort mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. but it was really what I mean. It, there, it was a clean win. It was a clean win, one hundred percent. I mean, it wasn't. It yeah. wasn't even that Carmella came up onto the ring apron and, and was, did something exactly. It, it was, was just like, hey, we're outside scuffling, and then yeah, like if Charlotte, you're Charlotte, oh. like, do you look? at fans when they're talking to you do you let that distract you from your match nope no this is just something that's happening yeah listen. don't look at it yeah listen you're if, in a fight with someone if if i'm wrestling in the ring and somebody pulls you to the outside ring bro you got to handle yourself I'm I'm focused on my match you got to focus on what's going on outside the match you best protect your neck you <laughs> best protect your neck yeah you best protect your neck. Smoke on the mic like smoking Joe Frazier, the Hellraiser, raising hell with the flavor. Terrorizing jams through some Pakistan. I'm swinging through your town like your neighborhood Spider Man. <laughs> so, uh, tick here we go. keep ticking. Here we go. Uh, sorry. I'll I don't stop. know who that is, but here That's we go. That's Wu Tang Clan, man. All right, well. Protect your neck. <laughs> don't, don't. All right, I see what you're saying, and yes, I will handle my business. Yeah. You need to, because I need to. I need to focus. Exactly. That, so that's that would be the message mm -hmm. I think for Charlotte Flair, which is handle your business, yeah, girl. Don't be distracted by distractions. Exactly. Next, we get Bobby Roode versus Mike Kanellis. This match didn't last that long, and Mike yeah, Kanellis I don't even think it lasted DDT. a minute. Did it last a no. full minute? No. I don't know. No. Nope. And then uh, Dolph Ziggler comes out. Really, his, what like, this <laughs> this match was was competing ring entrances oh and let's Dolph see Ziggler who had can the have best one let's see who can have the longer ring entrance oh, bobby man. Roode or mike canellis yeah. yeah basically and then uh dolph ziggler comes out and kind of mocks his whole thing they're setting up for their match at hell in a cell and uh yeah 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 so bobby Roode it, hits the glorious ddt Dolph comes out and yep. says, you're just an entrance. Yeah, At some it. point, the you're bell right. has to ring, and then you're going to be in there with you know, a better wrestler, essentially, with what the yeah. message is. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Here's my thing. I'm excited for this match, kind of. Part of me, as much as I love Shinsuke Nakamura, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. own a Shinsuke Nakamura shirt, and I wear it all the mm -hmm. time. I love Shinsuke. Yep. Part of me hopes that Bobby Roode... Beats Dolph Ziggler and gets will. hot shotted straight to a Jinder Mahal storyline and takes the belt off of Jinder. I mean, I know that Jinder has a match with Shinsuke, and I would be overwhelmed with joy well, should Shinsuke Nakamura beat Jinder Mahal. Hold on, I would be overwhelmed with joy. Yeah. But if that doesn't happen, I, I almost kind of don't want that to happen because Bobby Roode has so much momentum right now. Yes, he does. But listen, if. Shinsuke loses and Bobby goes straight to a hot shot title run. That means Ginger has beaten 
Randy. Yep. Shinsuke. Yep. And if Bobby beats him, basically Bobby beat Shinsuke and Randy. Randy. <laughs> Randy. <laughs> I'm, gonna say Wait, I'm like the one that, drinking huh? scotch. I know. Well, I'm drunk on life, man. Um, yeah, so it's just go- it's going to be competing entrances come Hell in a Cell. And uh, hopefully this is a good match. I'm excited for it. What do you think Dolph's entrance is going to be? It's going to be glorious. Is it? Do you yes. think it's going to be like over the top? Yes. Do you think it's going to be? Yes, I actually do. Part I actually think just... that he's going to go absolutely bonkers. And I hope, I hope. He does CM Punk. I hope he brings out cult of personality. Here's what I hope. I hope that Dolph Ziggler. Wait, wait the band's not cult of personality. No, it's um. Is there cult personality? Yeah. Oh man, why the band name? Anyways, is escaping me right Earth, now. Earth, Wind, and Fire. No. Meatloaf. Stop it. Uh, here's what Smash I hope Mal. for for Dolph's entrance. I kind of hope that he comes out in his first, not first gimmick, because that's the cheerleader yeah, thing. N- n- I hope he comes out squad. in the pink trunks mm. and mm-hmm. the white boots mm. and just comes out as Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. Just is, you know, like part of me hopes that he doesn't even have music, that it he just walks out. Okay. And it's just like, this is a wrestler's entrance. Okay. Next, we get the best part of the night, which is the Usos talk Hell in a Cell with the New Day. This was great. Whole, the Usos are on fire right now. Whole, holy crap. Yeah. If you want to watch something good, go watch that because Here, that was great is the beautiful thing about the Usos and what they did on the microphone. Yes. That was Detail. nothing but skill. Yeah. Right? I, I mean, when you talk about and when you look at most promos on mm-hmm. the microphone, mm-hmm. it's, we're going to beat you. You can't beat me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, he better stay out of my way. I'm the champ. This is why I'm Get the champ. Get my name out your mouth. Right, there's all sorts of this stuff, right? What the Usos did was creative. Yeah. It took skill. Rhyming. I think what it yeah, I mean there was rhyming, there was timing, there was the content that yeah. was amazing. Yeah. I I don't know that there's another team that could do something like that. Not that it has to be exact because they have a certain way that they speak, a certain gonna... affectation, a certain way that they say things that other people can't do. I'm not saying you have to do... We call that swag. Yeah. I'm, you don't have to do it exactly the same way. But like when you take the skill that they employed on the microphone and try to apply it, I don't know that there's another team that can do that. And I don't nope. even know if the New Day could do that. No, they can't. Nope. They're too fun. This was like real. This yeah. was real. It was real skill. It mm-hmm. was it was like Daniel Day Lewis like stuff. It was so good. If yeah. you haven't watched the Usos and their promo, Go you need to do yourself a favor and see it because it's next level. I will endorse that one. I don't endorse the Enzo one. Go watch the Uso yeah, one. because see, the thing is, is Enzo like that's just sort of like he what he's really good at is being organic and being dumb and mm-hmm. stupid. Okay, and all right, but and and boring. that's what we are usually saying. You know, when you talk about Samoa Joe, yeah. when you talk about guys that just have they grab the microphone and they don't lock up. You know, yeah, they grab the microphone and it doesn't matter if they forget what they're supposed to say. The thing that they think of is going to be just as good. Yeah, yeah. Right? Of course. What the Usos did took memorization. It took, like, I mean, they had to. I don't even think it took memorization. Like, I actually think that was, like, them. Like, they were cutting a promo like they would just be, like, if they were riding in a car. Yeah. And they were just like, hey, check out that guy. And then they just started, like, shooting a promo on him. I don't know, man. I mean, I if, like it's, what, if they do. what they did, if the rhyming and all of that stuff that they did was just off the cuff, yeah, 
I that that blows my mind even more. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's I think it's all just I have never been a bigger fan of the Usos. And you hope they win. I hope they win. I'll say it right now. I've got Bootios. I've got this on my I've got another Some Bootios are over there. Yeah, I've got another New Day t shirt. Yep. I've got all the New Day Funko Again. Pop Toys. Yep. I am a huge fan. I love the New Day. I love Kofi, Biggie, and Xavier Woods. Mm-hmm. I hope that the Usos win. Yeah, I agree. Uh, next, we get Ty Dillinger versus Baron Corbin with AJ Styles watching from back at Gorilla Station, basically. Uh, Ty Dillinger wins on a roll up, a cheeky, no, a small package, which I mean, I feel bad for Baron Corbin. I really do. Like, you just lost to Ty Dillinger, man. Hey, man, he's the perfect 10. I know what you're saying, though. I feel bad for the guy. I do. Like, yeah. I mean, the match wasn't. Anything it wasn't a super good special. match. No. Um, and there was really no reason for him to lose to Ty, other than to set up him being a crybaby. Because essentially, that's what. Uh, that's what happened. That's he just cried. Yeah, and and so AJ Styles shows up on the Titantron afterwards, mm-hmm. and essentially says, "You're just a petulant child." Yep. Essentially, basically. Um, and so I think that's the that's the direction that they're moving, is just him being kind of a big crybaby. Crybaby, yeah. That's sad. Um, next we get Randy. I'll let you talk about this one. I watched it, but I thought it was dumb. Versus Aiden English. This was the stupid match. Rusev was on the side. Aiden got in like two punches, and Randy hits him with an RKO. The RKO looked kind of okay. sick. The RKO looked kind of cool. Yeah. Because he, like, picks him up and, like, shoulder presses him, throws him up, and then hits him with the RKO. Yeah. Not as cool as your curb stomp RKO, but this was cool. Yeah, yeah. Stupid match, though. Had no point. Literally doesn't mean anything. Move on, because it's stupid. And then Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens come face-to-face. I thought this was dumb, too. I actually kind of like this. I, but, so they Shane's in the ring. He's cutting a promo on, on Kevin Owens saying, "Come out here." Oh wait, I liked not, parts of this. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree. Uh, come out here. The best part was the girl twerking. Yeah, come out here. Oh wait, you won't because you're a coward. And then he, they, um, Kevin Owens shows up on in the crowd, basically on taps is like. Yeah, I'm going to come down there. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not because I'm Kevin Owens and I can do what I want. Yeah. So then he walks away and Shane goes, I'm going to bring the fight to you because blah, blah, blah. Gets up there in the main concourse. So and he's then, got a camera following him around. Yep. They get up to the main concourse and wouldn't you know that Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens blindsides him. Boom. Whoa, who would have seen that coming? Whoa. Kicks the stuffing out of Shane McMahon and then Listen, power bombs him. That power bomb? Through a merch table. Listen, that power bomb... Yeah. Was not good. Dangerous. He struggled to get Shane up. He didn't even actually get him all the way up. No, he was like... He, he got him just above the table and then dropped him. And just kind of like... And he didn't even drop him. He just kind of like laid him down on top of it. Yeah. I mean, the uh, table broke. It's just he didn't get all the way up. So I'm kind of nervous for what's going to happen at Hell in a Cell. Uh, but anyway, so then uh, Kevin Owens comes down to the ring after that and mm-hmm. starts to cut a promo. And... Shane now comes down through the crowd. Uh, Kevin Owens goes to meet him in the crowd, and they scuffle uh, a little bit more. Um, they throw uh, Shane throws Kevin Owens over back over the barrier into the ring area. Yep, and they both get back in the ring. Um, Kevin Owens hits Shane, uh, and then he hits him with a uh, super kick, mm-hmm. and uh, Papa power bombs him. Yep, and uh, that Papa l- power bomb looked better. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he he leaves. Yep. Boom. SmackDown Live. What are you going to give it? Okay. I'm conflicted. I didn't like this episode. My gut wants to give it a four. Yeah, my gut wants to give it a four. That Uso promo, though, is a ten. I'm giving it a six because of the Uso promo. So I'm sp- I have to split it up. Yeah. This episode of SmackDown I thought was terrible. Yeah, it was bad. I'll I'll say even the probably go home a three. show too. I'll give it a 3 out of 10. 
uh, except for the Usos and the New Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That part was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way, but I got to give the whole show a number, so I'm giving it a six. And the six is mainly because of the Uso promo. Yeah. The rest of the show was like a two or three. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. All right, let's move to NXT. Let's do it. Oh, sorry. 205, 205 Live. 205 Live. Yeah. Um, we got some idiot in the idiot. ring talking a big storm. I don't know if you want to mention any more about this person who's just the worst. Oh, uh, Enzo. Yeah, that uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he cuts thing. a pretty good promo. He just talks for it. Well, no, Kalisto is in the middle. Sorry. Kalisto That's is right. in the middle Kalisto of the ring. Kalisto comes out first. And he starts cutting a promo. On Enzo, and, then and Enzo interrupted. comes out and starts like, "Hey, get your name out of my mouth, or get your get my mouth get <laughs> <laughs> get my mouth out your name." Uh, and well, he would probably say something stupid like that. So, and then we get Kalisto versus Arya Davari. I like this match; that was good. Kalisto's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's I think uh, gonna he's, he's gonna, gonna thrive, thrive. Yeah. in uh, Twelve yeah. Five Live. Then we get Drew Gulak versus Mustafa Ali. Not bad. It was a fine match. I'm starting to grew grew Drew Lack. Grew Drew Lack. Drew Gulak is starting to grow on me. He's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, I really, really, really didn't like him initially. Yeah. He's getting better. Yeah. This was a good match. I was I was yeah. I was happy with it. Then Cedric Alexander versus Jack Gallagher. Sed um, goes crazy. Sed goes so it's he goes DQ. straight savage. Yeah. So Gentleman Jack Gallagher wins because Cedric grabs the umbrella and But he beats grabs him. it from Jack, right? Yeah. It would have been a DQ in the opposite direction yes. if Jack had had his druthers. Yes. Um, but Cedric grabs the... Uh, Cane? Or the... The umbrella. Yep. William III. And he essentially shoves it up Jack Gallagher's behind. Oh. No, he hits him over the back with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I mean, he, yeah, emotionally, he, psychologically, uh, psychologically, that dude's hurt. Yeah. Um, then he just goes on a massive rampage of just beating the snot out of him. Yeah. Then the Brian Kendricks, there was a backstage segment where the Brian Kendricks was talking about uh, Cedric Alexander, and Cedric Alexander came out and was like, mm. keep my name out your mouth. I got it this time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, beat him up. Stopped goes out on to his the leg. ring. Yep, goes to the ring. This all happens. And then the Brian Kendricks comes hobbling down to help uh, Jack. Yeah. His poor, defenseless little bird. Yeah. Cool. That's 205 Live. What are you going to give it? Four. I'm going to give it a five. I like the Kalisto and I like the Cedric. Yeah, it's weird. There's so much in this that I feel like I should have liked more. Mm-hmm. But it you didn't should've. really work for me. Mm-hmm. I thought overall it was a boring episode. Fair enough. NXT. Let's do it because NXT this was, was not, not boring. boring. No. So we get Ruby Riot versus Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. They are the tag team, and I am uh, not Ruby a Riot fan. Is not. I am not a fan of the iconic duo. I am not either. They Billy suck. Kay makes me laugh sometimes. Mm. So mm. that's all I'll say. Uh, but Ruby doesn't have a tag partner until later on in the match after she gets the stuff and beaten out of her. Ruby. Ruby comes out, or sorry, Nikki comes Ruby. out and gets a hot tag, and Ruby ends up pinning. Yeah, uh, Nikki. Uh, yeah, so Nikki gets in. She does some damage. Mm-hmm. She ends up getting a backpack crossface on Billy Kay. Yep. Billy Kay backs up onto Ruby's side. Ruby tags in yep. and hits a like missile drop kick. Double. Double missile drop kick. She hits Billy and Peyton. Yep. Uh, and then she hits a uh, her like side hammer lock kick to the head. Yeah, thing. it's weird. So she but, gets the win. Yeah, it's fine. Next we have our boy Leo Rush making his NXT debut. Yeah, man of the hour. That one right here. That's the one. Um. Yeah. He makes his debut. He's walking to the ring. He's doing his thing. He's fighting Alistair, Alistair Black. Black. His uh, Alistair Black's intro starts off. Yep, and he starts walking down to the ring, and then out of nowhere, Velveteen VD. Dream. VD. Starts beating up Leo Rush. Hits him with a uh, purple Rainmaker. No, I purple hate that Rain name. whatever. Purple Rainmaker. 
It's a purple raindrop, I think, or something like that. Mario Ronaldo called it a purple rainmaker. Oh, well, I think a rainmaker like Okada, so. I know. That's the thing. That's why I hate that name. Yeah. And then Alistair Black and... At least they're not calling it a Macho Man elbow. That's true. Um, Alistair Black kind of just gets into the ring and sits there, and Velveteen Dream is like, say my name, acknowledge me, I need attention. <laughs> Tell me you love me, Daddy. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Basically, I have suppressed issues, and I need you to... Acknowledge me. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we don't get anything out of it, but no. good job, Leo. We're happy that you're in NXT. My, okay, so I, my wife watches the show um, America's Next Top Model, and there is a, a person on there called Miss J, and Velveteen Dream is exactly what like Miss J, J would look like wrestling. Wow. All right. Exactly. So all you uh, America's Next Top Model fans out there, your new favorite wrestler I don't watch is it. Velveteen Dream. Yeah. I don't watch America's Next Top Model, mm. but I have seen mm. parts of episodes. I, I, have, I don't know why I felt like I have to qualify it, but I do. I don't watch that show. Anyways, let's move on. I don't know who Miss J is. Unless you're talking about Miss Jackson. I'm sorry, sorry Miss Jackson. Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. Uh, next we get Kyrie Sane versus Aaliyah. Yes, and the Man. only thing that I care about is seeing Kyrie's Ooh. elbow. Yeah, man, she jumps off and her feet are like stacked up under her, like bent, and she hits like she comes out there like this, and those feet just. They unfurl like a like a sail, sail. and uh, she she wins. I mean, and she hits the mat like a ton of bricks. She weighs like ninety pounds. Yeah, and she's man, like, she hits that boom, thing. bam. I mean, this whole match, Sorry. Kyrie bam. is like is like destroying this girl with her elbow. Like, yeah. Kyrie doesn't care. She will hit you with her elbow as hard as she wants to, and it's scary. Yeah, but. Good to see that. Yeah, she is. At some at one point, Kyrie is uh, is doing the the chops, mm-hmm. and the the girl Aaliyah is like putting her sh- turning her shoulder into it, and it's like, stop I it. you could see stop it. Stop it. Stop like the little bloop, 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 like little word bubble yeah. saying like please stop hitting me. Yeah. This it actually hurts. Um, next we get an NXT Championship match between Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Three, 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 McIntyre, and Roddy. I don't know what. Well, it doesn't matter. He's from. He's he's American. So Roddy. 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 Strong. My name's Roddy Strong. Dude, they have a backstage segment before the match starts, and he's got this like tension thing, <laughs> he's got like that. Uh, band, you know, and he's just like, <sighs> oh, it's so heavy, it's so heavy, getting a real workout. Oh man, dude, it was. I was cracking up. Uh, but this was a long match. Really long match. Amazing. So great. Uh, uh, amazing. Like the Usos. Um, great Drew McIntyre match. wins. Yes. And they kind of had like this weird Shawn Michaels and uh, Ric Flair moment where Roddy is like in the middle of the ring and yes. he looks at Drew and he's like mouthing something. We don't know what it is. It's probably hit the finish. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he's setting up the Claymore. Yep. So, Drew is in one corner in the turnbuckle, and Roddy is across the thing. And he's Roddy says something. And part of me was just like, I feel like if you pan over to look at Drew, Gu- uh, Drew Gulak, Whoa! Drew McIntyre's face, he, he, I swear he, he went, I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. And then hit him with the Claymore. Or he said, Olive juice, yeah, in my martini tonight at the bar. Drinks are on me. That's NXT. It was a great match. Man, I would give NXT a ten out of ten if I could, but there was no heavy machinery. Yeah, I yeah, no I can't. Machinery. I'll I'll go nine though. I'm gonna go nine. Nine yeah. on that one. That was great. Now, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, before we go, we we're should not say done yet. that. Uh, it was just announced that 
NXT is going to be having a show in Houston, and it's War Games. Yeah, it, it is. It is the old w- NWA WCW stipulation match, essentially, where it's the two rings in one cage in a team versus another team. So at the very end of NXT, Roddy is backing up the uh, the ramp. ramp, and the Undisputed Era comes out. And, they're like, and they hey, say something to him. Match. They go, good match? Yeah. They did good Good yeah. match. So part Strong of me work. is like, man, are they setting up Roddy to be on the Undisputed Era's I team? I would love it. I would love for it. For War Games? Oh, forever. I would love it. Roddy doesn't need to be a face. Be the heel. Embrace it. Embrace yeah. it. So anyways, that's very interesting to me. Do and it. it's amazing that the WWE is bringing back War Do Games. Do it. War Games is... Do it. Listen, I grew up in the South, and I went to my fair share of WCW shows, and War Games... Was your favorite. Is, is, ...is great. It's just fun. I can't wait. I can't wait to watch it. So We'll probably do a video on it. But we will be doing a predictions video for Hell in a Cell that's coming up this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So... I completely forgot about that. We're doing yeah. that now, aren't we? We're going to do it. Wow. All right. Well, let's wrap up this video then yeah. so that we can do that. Let's do it. Uh, anyways, again, thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, if you could do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, like button, and share button. Share it with friends. Um, we would love to hear from you. You could leave us a comment on uh, our videos, mm-hmm. or you could Tweet check us out us. on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Twitter being the preferred mode of... Uh, oh, did you see this little... Oh, it's not a spider. No, it's a little um, buggy. I saw him. Oh, I got my eye on him. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, we're definitely more active on Twitter. You know, I try to post when I can on Facebook. Yeah, I try um, to post on Instagram when I can, but I can't. Yeah. So how about we break that down? You, okay. You post on Instagram. I'll post on Facebook. Yeah. And then we have we have separate Twitter accounts. Yep. Uh, so you can hit us up there. Yep. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Unless you have anything else. Got nothing else. All right. We will see you next week.